Grace, mercy, and peace be with you in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. Over the past few weeks, I have been praying for people with COVID, people who have been diagnosed with cancer or other major health issues. I've prayed for healthcare workers and our hospital systems. I've prayed for people in hospice and people in comas. I've prayed for the dead. I've prayed for people who have lost homes and fires and people who have lost loved ones. It seems like I've prayed for so much tragedy and loss. And I know that many of your prayers have been like that too. They're like that in church each week. Each week when we have the prayers of the people, we pray for the church, the world, and all people in need. You may have noticed that there's a pattern to these prayers. We begin by praying for the church, for the effectiveness of its ministry, and for servants of Christ. Then we pray for creation. Lately, those prayers for creation have been about reversing the damage that we've done to the earth and making us better stewards of our world. Then we pray for the nation, which is usually places that are in conflict or praying for the world's most vulnerable populations. Then we pray for all those people in need. Sometimes we name general conditions like addiction or depression. And then we name our loved ones and members of our community who are each hurting in their own way. And finally, if there's no other specific prayer concerns, we pray for our beloved dead and for those who grieve the loss. And when you think about it, it's all really heavy stuff. In prayer, we invite God's presence and activity into the midst of struggle and pain and desperation. Over the course of my life, I've prayed probably thousands of prayers. But never once have I prayed for more wine. And after reading our gospel text today, though, I think that maybe I should. Because all of this time, I may have been missing something really important about the nature of God. In our gospel text today, we meet Jesus and his mother and their friends at a wedding, at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. Now, this had to have been one heck of a wedding, because by the time we get there, the wine is all gone. And recognizing that this is a bit of a problem, yet one that can be solved, Jesus' mother approaches her son and says, Jesus, they're all out of wine. Now, as the mother of two boys, I have learned that children are hardwired to argue with their parents. And Jesus is no exception to this rule. So he argues with his mom, saying, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. She, of course, disregards his argument, which parents are hardwired to do, and says to the servants, do whatever he tells you. And in short order, the water in six stone jars is transformed into 180 gallons of wine. That's about the equivalent of a thousand bottles. And it's not just wine, it's good wine. Our Lutheran tradition has a particular theological bent. We are really clear in our understanding of what's called the theology of the cross. This is the idea that God is revealed most powerfully in the experience of suffering, in the suffering of Jesus on the cross and in our own experiences of suffering. This perspective is incredibly helpful in hard times. It helps us understand that God is with us and will never leave us. It assures us that God knows about the experience of suffering firsthand and that God can relate to the depth of our pain. And it helps us see Christ in other people who are suffering, particularly the least and the last among us. It's a really beautiful theology. There is strength and there is depth in it that's incredibly powerful. When I was in seminary and I was learning about this tradition and about this theology, I was told somewhat arrogantly, now I see, that we're not like those happy, clappy churches. The ones that just praise, praise, praise all the time. I was taught that happy, clappy theology, often called the theology of glory, it falls apart in hard times. It fails to sustain people when they are most in need. And that may be true, but the theology of the cross is also hard to carry around all the time. Now, I know with every fiber of my being that God is with us in our suffering and that God understands our pain and our grief and our fear. I know that God draws near to us when we are sick or hurting or when we have nothing left to give. I know that. But I need to remember more often that God is also a God who makes a thousand bottles of wine so that a party can keep going. Because God is not just a God who understands suffering. But our God is also a God who understands joy. 
and love and life and surprises and celebration and community. Sometimes in the suck, like in the middle of a pandemic or in the midst of whatever hardship you might be dealing with, it's easy to forget that about God. Maybe that's why the first miracle of Jesus is what it is. In the Gospel of John, Jesus' miracle debut isn't casting out demons or healing the sick or feeding the hungry or raising the dead. It's turning water into wine. Because God is present with us in our pain, but God is also present at the party. And we certainly shouldn't stop praying for people who are sick or dying or for God to intervene in the brokenness of our lives. But in this new year, maybe we should pray for more wine. Not literally. Well, maybe literally. <laughs> but let's pray for miracles of joy, for celebration, for surprises, for love, for life. Let's open our hearts and our eyes to the ways that God is also present in all of the good stuff, in weddings and in wine and in miracles of abundance. I once read that a theology of joy is an act of resistance against despair and all of its forces. In the big picture, the miracle at Cana might be seen as frivolous, but that is far from the truth. If an act of joy is resistance against despair, then this miracle is a call to arms. It's an invitation to gather and to live and to laugh and to eat and to drink and to celebrate and to love. It's an important reminder that God is present in all of those moments too, not just in the hard stuff. And sometimes God even brings the wine. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.